Today's video is presented to you by the EA Creator Network. Special thanks to EA for providing me with early access to Madden 25 so I could capture these videos. Before we get into the video, just keep in mind everything that you're about to see is a work in progress and things may change. Enjoy the video. It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. All that and more coming up next. Well, we knew snow was a possibility for this game, and the weather was happy to oblige with a nice layer of white over Pittsburgh's Acrisure Stadium. And we got more snow on the way. Welcome again, one and all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brandon Gunn on hand alongside Charles Davis. And yes, the storyline here, the weather. Snow and more of it expected as this game continues. So how will that impact how this one goes? Can these teams ignore the distraction and the strangeness of playing in a snow game? Because it actually affects the crowd as well. That big roar you get is often muffled when there's a snow game. And the second part, what's the footwear you got on? Does that fit the turf you're playing on? And how will it handle as things get a little bit slick? Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And we are underway from Pittsburgh. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. They'll be led out by the man who proclaims to be from a whole pack of Badgers, came into the league back in 2012, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. A first carry for Najee Harris. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Wilson. Complete Jefferson the target. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now a first down carry for Harris. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 12 more yards there and another first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. From midfield now, here's Wilson. Now a short pass pulled in by Washington. So the completion good for just three. And that will bring up second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 47 now, they'll work with a second and seven. Now Wilson. Incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. out of bounds inside the 35. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. He's a talented runner, and that means he's always looking for bigger and bigger gains when he takes off. Certainly found some bonus yards there beyond the first down marker, and this early drive will continue with that extra jolt from his legs. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. 
Here's Wilson. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That's good for a first down, his second catch of the opening drive. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Wilson. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, right side. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right, that run after catch. No score after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football. Ball at the nine on second and eight. As they've got it as we resume action. Now it's Wilson. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Throwing again here, Wilson. No, bottled up, fumble, it's out, it's loose. Bad place to fumble down here in the red zone. At least they got it, they'll have another shot. Or no, they won't have another shot. It's gonna be fourth down. Maybe they can at least salvage three. And they were thinking six points because at this position of the field, it's go time, right? You take your shots at the end zone. They weren't able to do that one. So you look over at the sideline, there's a head coach saying, oh, heck, kick it. Field goal time. Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. So an opening drive field goal maybe doesn't whip this crowd into a frenzy, but I think that they will take the early lead. There's no doubt about it. They will always take the early lead, and maybe that celebration comes later if they play well and they can break things open. But right now, this is all about letting the offense just get settled in. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Texans offense heading out behind their quarterback in his second season, last year's Offensive Rookie of the Year, C.J. Stroud. And the first possession isn't until the second quarter, but what's nice about it, it's only down three. So what you sell your team on is, look, one possession, one drive, we put it in the end zone. We're in the lead in this game. Let's go, guys. Play action. Here's Stroud. On the move to his left. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Alex Highsmith making a nice play and getting the sack. I think a lot of time when we see a sack, you say, well, you blame it on the offensive line, the quarterback, but here, maybe you just tip your hat to the defender. What a play. Yeah, and I think sometimes they just get a sense of the play before the ball's even snapped. Kind of like a sprinter anticipating the gun in a race. They're off, and guess what? The quarterback's down. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. A first carry here for Joe Mixon. And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. Nothing there, no gain, and now they're looking at a third and 15. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. 
Now he's loose down the left sideline. And he'll finally be taken down at the 18. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. A shotgun snap to Stroud. They'll complete this one to Collins. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Boy, no problems getting down the field here on this opening drive. They've looked really sharp in the early going. And they've come up with some big plays already. Here's another that's going to set up first and goal. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And it's caught. Touchdown, Texans. Stephon Diggs. A five-yard touchdown. And the Texans have taken the lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that drive spanned five plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. From the gun, it's Wilson. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. Here's second and ten. Now Wilson. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Harris running straight ahead. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard stripe. Cameron on fourth Johnson. down, Cameron out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Desmond King deep for Houston. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And with a 7-3 lead, we'll see how aggressive they want to be. Stroud looking to throw. And he 
Lee takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. After the incompletion, they'll try once more from the 20-yard line on second and 10. Stroud. He's going deep for Brown. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. I like what they did there because many of the deep throws we see in the course of a game come to the outside, the perimeter of the field. In this case, they used a slot receiver to run deep downfield and tried to connect that way. Unsuccessful in that attempt, but I like what they were doing. This time they stay on the ground. And they will bottle him up behind the line, and now will they use a timeout? Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's Tommy Townsend on to punt. The back deep for the Steelers is Calvin Austin. This is fielded at the 27. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. One more drive here for the Steeler offense in this first half. And with great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal, they'll certainly have the green light here. So good field position for the Steelers as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. A short one there to Fryermuth. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Here's Wilson to throw. Got his man. It's Warren. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Here now, second and four. the play fake. Here's Wilson. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. It'll go as a loss of a yard on what should be the final play of the first half. So we've reached intermission here in a low scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side could play mistake-free football the rest of the way. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. This snow front that has socked much of the East Coast not going away as we are back to it in the second half. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10.
Mixon will get it to start the second half. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. From the 41, here's a second and four. Stroud sets up the play action. He finds his man complete. That's back. Four yards the pick up, first down. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. You know, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Now Stroud. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Schultz. First target, first catch, and a first down. Impressive catch there by Schultz. He's come up a strong campaign that saw him produce over 600 yards in his first season with the Texans. He's more than a reliable target. He's a team leader on the offensive side of the ball. Play action. Stroud now. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And incomplete on the deep ball. I certainly like the idea. You're down on their side of the field. Get your big play guy involved. That time, they put one up for him to see if he can pull it down in the end zone. But the coverage was good, and it winds up incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Throwing now is Stroud. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. I like the call. It looked like the right time to dial up a running back screen. But this one got disrupted right from the start and ends up falling incomplete. Now the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. Here goes Stroud again. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 17-yard line. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Here's Stroud. And that is incomplete. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. A second and ten forthcoming here. Third quarter action in the Steel City of Pittsburgh, PA. Stroud will look to throw once more. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Stephon Diggs. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Texans take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs.
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. They make their second half debut here, and things are looking a little bit tougher now. You give up the points there, Charles, that touchdown drive on the other side. So now it's a two-score game here. Got to be careful. They certainly do, and I'm just wondering at halftime if those guys just looked into each other's eyes and realized what they've got to get done and come out a little bit more charged up because if they don't get some kind of points here, that next drive, that can make this a three-possession game. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. Here's Wilson. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he will be taken down with a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Steelers with the football, but trailing here as we get going in quarter number four. From midfield now, here's Wilson. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Under four to go now as they come up on second down. To throw is Wilson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. And the Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Now run straight ahead with Warren. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Fuller run show Fadakasi able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Well, the elements, the crowd, the situation. This is NFL football at its best. Here's third down. That is caught. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. 
They'll try the right side with Harris. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now second and four. On the give, it's Warren. Dan Pushing and fighting his way in for a Steeler touchdown. Jalen Warren, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. So still a little work to do here, but they got the much-needed conversion. So they got that taken care of. Now you would assume onside kick in order to try and get the ball back again, in order to try and kick at least a tying field goal. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. The Houston's offense taken over again. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. They've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And the Texans are going to have a first down, and that is the big one, as they should be able to run it out from here. Try to eat some clock with Mixon. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner. And there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. 
The heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. It's a pickup of five, and that should just about wrap this one up. And that's the type of run that you'll live with. In this game, he's had a good number of carries. He's just been unable to really break off anything substantial. To Anigo Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. And with that, we say so long from Pittsburgh.